Zhao Pei Li is young, attractive and very different from the Chinese chief engineer I had imagined I would meet as I drove the 85 kilometers out of Addis Ababa through rolling farmland to the new Ethiopia-China Agricultural Technology Demonstration Center. Wearing a red builder's helmet, Zhao started the tour by showing a picture of a small wooden shack, her home when she first started on the project two years ago. Walking around just a fraction of the area being developed into the new center, I was shown multiple plots of land with Chinese and local workers busily constructing rising buildings. Zhao talked passionately about the project. This project is a gift for Isobia government. Then I think that's a, how to say, there's a, like um, friendship, yeah, like French between Chinese and uh, China and uh, Isobia. As part of a drive initiated by Chinese Ministry of Commerce to help improve livelihoods in Africa, 142 agricultural projects have been set up across the continent, including 14 specialized agricultural technology demonstration centers. At the China-Africa Summit in 2006, when the announcement of the support was first made, the transfer of Chinese agricultural technology to local African partners as a means to improve food security was cited as a key reason for building the projects. Uh, when you talk about uh, um, agricultural promotion and agricultural development in general, it's all about maintaining food security. Food security cannot maintain without building of assets, without income generating, without having wealth and prosperous at household level. This is a target. We cannot adopt technologies from UK or from US or from any further developed Western countries, rather this Eastern countries, China, India and the other Asian country. More or less they are nearer to the African context. In February, the Guanxi International Construction Engineering Company will hand over the new research and teaching facility to the Guanxi Bai Gui Agricultural Science and Technology Company, who have been tasked with running the center for its first three years. It will then be donated to the Ethiopian Ministry of Agriculture as a gesture of goodwill from the Chinese government. Liang, who has already been in Ethiopia for more than two years, is optimistic about the potential of increasing yields in Ethiopia. A key issue now being discussed between the Chinese and Ethiopian scientists is whether to concentrate the research just on cereal crops or look to cash crops as a means of economic development. While Liang is focused on boosting staple food productivity in the short term, Xie Tai believes the longer term plan has to be broader. When talk about technology transfer, it's all about food security. When you talk about income generating activities, it's all about food security. So promotion of agricultural development interventions, it's all about mean maintaining food security at household level, at regional level, and at national level at the end of the day. Gu Xiaojie, Chinese ambassador to Ethiopia, is extremely enthusiastic about the project, particularly given the recent drought across the Horn of Africa. He believes it is timely and demonstrates a long-term commitment to food security and is just as important as the emergency aid now arriving from China in Ethiopia. As I was about to leave the agricultural center, Zhao was called over to sort out a crane that had become stuck in the thick mud around the site. Without thinking, she transitioned from my articulate, soft voice tour guide to an authoritative, confident building manager barking instructions at both Chinese and Ethiopian workers. Within a minute, the problem was resolved and work resumed as usual. Next February, she plans to return to Guanxi in the belief that she has done something important for the people of Ethiopia. Uh, we hope Ethiopia uh, will grow up, will uh, develop up. So that's why we came here, give some help, support to them, let them uh, let the Ethiopia um, people's lives 
getting better and better.